Zura Faizi. She's a lecturer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and an education researcher at Harvard University. Thank you for your time. Now, with this progressive removal of women's rights in Afghanistan, I'm wondering what you think the life and the role the, the Taliban is cornering women into would look like. Yes, thank you for having me. This is devastating news, um, somewhat unexpected as well. I think there was some hope left in, in Afghanistan that as long as universities remain open for women and girls, that high schools would also um, open up soon. Um, however, this um, yeah, this decision is um, is devastating, and I think has um, really um, uh, we've. Uh, I think it's also important to understand how decisions are made within this political structure. That it is not. Um, it's one individual at the very top who is being advised by. A small group of scholars to make um, these restrictive uh, policies against girls and women's education in Afghanistan. And in fact, increasingly, we are hearing dissenting voices from within the Taliban um, who who do not support these positions. And I think we have to be aware of those of those voices and um, and and figure out how to empower those voices further and in order to make ch positive changes, as well as lifting the voices of civil society actors within Afghanistan. So I'd just like to pick up on that point you made there about it being, you know, a uh, direction from one person in particular. I've just found that with these decisions coming from the Taliban, that they seem to kind of become in a particularly cruel way. In March, we had girls blocked from returning to secondary schools. On the morning that they were supposed to reopen, girls turning up to school thinking that education was back and it wasn't. And then this, uh, this announcement today, only a couple of months after so many girls have taken their university admission tests. Why do they do it this way? Yes, it's shocking. And there's very little transparency about decision-making processes as well as how um, how announcements are made, when they're made. In fact, um, the former, we have some information that the former Minister of Higher Education was fired because he would not go ahead with this decision that um, that is spearheaded by the, the person at the top is the Emir or the Supreme Leader. Um, and, and then we, um, a few months ago, the the Minister of Higher Education was removed and replaced with the current minister who announced a decision. So um, I don't have any clear ideas about how decisions are made as well as why they're announced, when they're announced, especially when there is um, some hope that things will continue as they, as they did before and then very last minute we um, hear otherwise. And uh, Ned Price from the uh, US State Department said that basically the Taliban would, would pay for this current restriction. Will they? I mean, what, what, what can the international community do at this point? Yeah, unfortunately, there, Afghanistan is facing a series of crises within crises. Um, we know that the country is undergoing a mass humanitarian crisis with over half of the population facing uh, food insecurity. One million children are at risk of severe uh, malnutrition that could be life-threatening. And so um, in addition to that, there is consensus within the humanitarian sector that humanitarian aid cannot be conditional and it does not impact political decisions. Um, we cannot continue to harm the people of Afghanistan by um, punishing them through restricting aid to the country. Um, we have to continue with diplomatic efforts and recognize the diversity within the organization as well, within the organization of the Taliban, as well as, again, civil society actors in Afghanistan um, who, who understand this movement from within and who can um, who can make headways in terms of engagement. So I, I, um, I think that's really shocking to hear and I um, hope that um, there are not, there, there aren't more sanctions on the country. Okay. 
thank you so much for your time. That's Zura Faizi. She's a lecturer and a researcher at both MIT and Harvard University. Thanks for your analysis there. Thank you.